Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Dental Up Podcast, brought to you by Keating Dental Arts, a full-service, award-winning dental laboratory. Each week, you'll learn tips and techniques from real-world dentists, bringing you in-depth interviews, motivating stories, current events, and sports. Here's your host, Sean Keating. Hey everyone, Sean here. Welcome to another episode of the Dental Up Podcast. Our guest this week is a graduate from the University of Missouri, Kansas City School of Dentistry, a United States Army veteran, and is a member of the Kansas Dental Association, the ADA, and the Academy of General Dentistry. Practicing from Wichita, Kansas, please welcome Dr. Stephen Dugan, DDS. How's it going, Dr. Dugan? Hey, going well. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, dude, thank you so much, man. I know how busy you are, and you got a booming dental practice, and I uh, can't thank you for all the work. I mean, we've been together over 10 years here, and uh, you just rock and roll, baby, man. You're doing it right out there in Kansas. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, well, sure trying. We uh, give it heck. Oh, man, that's so cool. Well, dude, I always start off talking a little bit about sports, man. I I know you're a Kansas guy. You, you like K-State, college football, or what, what sports you like out there or anywhere? Yes, so I'm a K-State grad, so definitely uh, definitely still cheer for K-State and, um, and pro sports, Kansas City Chiefs and Dallas Cowboys, who I root for. There you go. That's a little odd, Kansas City Chiefs and Dallas Cowboys. How'd that work? You have a little connection to Texas, do you, or? Well, I was born in Dallas, but my oh, parents moved to Wichita when I was six months old. So this is home, but still, still root for the Cowboys. No kidding. Yeah. I remember back in the day, I'm, I'm much older than you, I'm sure. But uh, Dallas was like America's team back in the day with Roger Staubach. And, you know, uh, it's just, yeah, uh, that's right. it's just Tony Dorsett and just Hollywood Henderson and all those guys. And they were getting back into it pretty good recently, but I don't know. Um, they didn't look too good the other day. And, I think Kansas City didn't look that good. What happened to them? I think uh, I'm not sure about that, but uh, it's well, still. Chiefs pulled out a win, but Dallas sure didn't. Yeah, I just think um, it's still early. But uh, hey, our Rams look pretty good against the Raiders, man. We got we got the Rams finally back here after all the years, and I was a little worried on the first series when they went down. They went, you know, Oakland went down and like scored and. We're supposed to have this badass uh, defense, and then our first series, we had this superstar offense, and uh, it was three and out, and we had to punt, and I'm like, what, Ro? <laughs> What's going on, man? <laughs> but uh, yep, I understand that. No, it's it's exciting, to, uh, you know, especially, too. Uh, I was just in Kansas uh, recently, um, flying to Kansas City, and my friend lives in Overland Park there. And just uh, it's be- okay. it's just beautiful out there in Kansas and Missouri area, and the people are so nice, and it's just so green, and what a great place, man! And talk about food and barbecue, man! I tell you, I'm an eater. I'm yeah, a little they, foodie. You got good stuff. Yeah, they definitely have that up there. Wichita is a nice place to be to raise a family, so it's working well for us. Yeah, it was weird. We had a thing in the paper how best best places rated you know i think medium to large cities or something in the whole united states and the number one place to raise a family was overland park kansas and i had to call my buddy and send him a picture on my phone i go look at this and then i our kids grew up in irvine and my company's in irvine and uh we were number three because it's kind of like a family community and just you know plant master plan community here in irvine and that's why we moved here way back in the day and um so it's kind of neat to see Overland Park, you know, you know, rated up there. And my buddy always said, he goes, Sean, like 20 years ago when he moved there, and he's a dental technician also. And he goes, this kind of reminds me of Irvine. It's just a neat little place, you know, there's beautiful, you know, foliage and just people are real nice. Great place to raise children. And lo and behold, look at, they're like rated, <laughs> rated number one. So he, was, he wasn't lying when he said that, but uh, that's. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's definitely a nice place. Ah, oh, it's neat, man. All right. Well, hey, let's dental up. And um, so tell me, Dr. Dugan, uh, at what point, why did you get into dentistry? And at what point did you think, I want to be a dentist? Well, it ended up, I decided the um, second semester at college and I uh, have a an uncle who's uh, well now a retired periodontist. Oh, okay. And um, kind of enjoyed the thought of medicine. Thought I might like that, but not necessarily to to become a physician. Knowing the issues that they are having with uh, the insurance and um, 
you know, having to go to the hospital in that aspect. So dentistry was uh, a better fit. I liked the idea of being my own boss and, and uh, thought that would work well. And, and it has been enjoying it. That's awesome. Now, tell me a little bit about your uh, college um, journey. Tell me a little bit about where you went to college and maybe your undergraduate, if you could, a little bit. Yeah, went to K-State uh, for undergrad and uh, ended up being kind of neat. I did a, a, a had a, a, an opportunity to kind of observe with other dentists and, okay. and Fort Riley is right near Manhattan, Kansas, where K-State is. And so I went out and observed at Fort Riley and then uh, had a scholarship paying for three years of dental school in the Army. And so when I was actually in the Army, I was stationed at Fort Riley in okay. the exact same dental clinic that... Uh, that I'd observed in years ago. So oh, that's so it's cool. kind of neat to come full circle. Oh yeah. That's awesome. My brother did the same thing. The Navy gave him a scholarship to go to dental school. And then um, he had to stay in the Navy. He ended up staying in for about 10 years. Um, the last two years, they, they put him up to go do endodontics. And so he did that. And I think in Bethesda, Maryland and, but what a great thing, man, serving our country. Thank you for that, your service and everything else. And, I know uh, yes, thank you. Grabbing, getting a little bit ahead, but uh, I know you're in the Army, and uh, you actually uh, were over in, um, I think, Baghdad and said, for, you know, over there for a little bit. How was that, man? Kind of crazy being over in Baghdad and kind of scary, man. I don't, I, don't, I don't think people realize what it's like to be in the armed services and to go into war-torn areas and stuff. You know, it was definitely different. Um, hadn't been to that part of the world before and it was definitely eye-opening to say the least um i was there during uh the winter months though so it was oh, oh, cooler man. and that's their rainy season so things got to be kind of uh you know muddy and and that kind of thing but um i was only there for about four months I went over to replace actually it was a buddy of mine who needed to come back for knee surgery so okay. i completed that unit's tour uh four months and um, you know, getting to treat the soldiers that were over there, um, trying to help them get out of pain. And, uh, so that was, that was rewarding. It was a good experience in that regard. And, um, you know, as far as being kind of different, you're not knowing what goes on over there. Like you said, I was first over there within the first week and traveling in a convoy of, uh, four Humvees. And I was in the third there's an, one of those IED uh, oh, devices that blew up in between the third and fourth vehicle. Oh. And um, nobody was injured, um, but could feel the concussive force go through the, the oh. vehicle and felt that, you know, kind of in your chest and thought, oh, oh gosh, this just got real. Oh, man, so, that's so but, scary. Uh, that's the closest I came to any real danger, fortunately. Oh. Um, but, yeah, that was an eye-opener, to say the least. That's just crazy. I just... Uh... A lot of people take things for granted. I'm a Navy brat myself, and my dad was in the Navy 31 years and kind of went all over the U.S., and you just uh, you have a respect for it just after you see what you have to go through and just not knowing if they're coming home, and, you know, it's just it's just something uh, I'm very thankful, and um, I wish – I wish more Americans were really thank thankful, more patriotic. Some aren't, you know, they just take things for granted and you just can't, man. Our liberties and everything else have been fought and fought hard for and um, to have our freedoms and some people just take it for granted a little bit, yeah, that's right. you know, but absolutely, uh, absolutely. they do. But mm -hmm. uh, I thank you so much for that. So thank you. Um, well, tell me a little bit about, so when you got out of dental school, did you start out as an associate or did you purchase a practice? Tell me a little bit about that if you could. So out of dental school with the scholarship, I spent the first three years active duty in the Army and then came back to Wichita, um, was an associate in a practice and um, got learned about another opportunity uh, to purchase a practice. Um, things things weren't going the best, I'd say, as, as the associate. So okay. um, looked to go elsewhere and... Um, Purchased a practice in March of 06 and, um, you know, built that back up, uh, built that practice up some. And, and then um, January of 17, had a colleague and friend who uh, was going to retire and I ended up buying his practice. And so yeah. moved my office to this new location. Um, I was leasing before. 
in the old practice and now I'm I own the building, so that's been nice. Yeah. And um, I'd say more than double the size of the practice by making that purchase. So oh, that's so cool. It's been working out really well. Oh, that's it. It takes a leap of faith, too, to go and to jump from one practice to another. I thought you were going to say, yeah, I just bought another practice, so I have two. But sometimes it's uh, best just to concentrate on one and build it properly. But uh, And especially, too, to go from you know leasing or renting to purchasing it. That's nothing but good for you. You, you know, that's going to come back for you in the future, especially when you, if you need to borrow on it or anything like that to help further, you know, um, grow your practice or, or not, you know. Sure. Um, but that's that's awesome, man. That's the dream. Good job. Tell me a little bit oh, about. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, it was definitely scary making that <laughs> yeah, making that second purchase, you know, wondering, can I handle this? And um, am I going to be able to make a go of this? Because that's a lot of debt to incur. Yeah. and. Uh, making those payments still so oh yeah no. it, it, was, it was the best move i could have made and um that's so awesome. haven't looked back since so. that's so cool well you're crushing it man for sure what about with on your practice tell me a little bit about the layout how many ops you got maybe tell me a little bit about the staff you got going um yeah i have in this building now there are six total treatment rooms i work out of two and i have four full-time hygienists oh, beautiful um so they definitely keep me hopping around. And um, so the four hygienists, I have two assistants and uh, two work in the front. No kidding. How does that work on your hygienist? Do you have them staffed different days of the week? Are you full Monday through Friday? Tell me a little bit of how, because I have a few dentists that work with one or two hygienists and they stagger them a little bit, but to have four, and I've had quite a few guys that have three and four, but uh, tell me how you stagger them and, and uh, the workflow that you have, if you could. We're uh, Monday through Thursday, okay. eight to five, and three of them work um, that full time every day. And then uh, the fourth one is um, three and a half days, actually. So she's off Tuesday afternoons. Okay. But otherwise, they're here all the time. And um, yeah, you know, sometimes it gets to be a bit of a challenge getting around to the rooms to do the exams. Yeah. Um, you know, once in a while, we'll look ahead and see if somebody, um, if a patient has had an exam already within the year, then they don't need one necessarily mm -hmm. um, on that particular day. So um, that can help free up some time for me if I'm really swamped with the procedure, then um, I can kind of skip a couple of those exams. Um, if the hygienist doesn't, hasn't found anything, doesn't need me to look at something or the patient hasn't said, Hey, I'd really like him to look at this. Then, then yeah, we can, we can punt on uh, an exam and just make sure that we get them next time. Absolutely. And uh, so that, that can definitely help. I still make it around most of the time, but once in a while I, I take advantage of that and try to keep on schedule. Absolutely. How do you do with uh, like your prox management, your staff? I mean, on recalls, all that. You, did you work with anyone in particular or how did you get to know how to really work that back and front end of, of the practice? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Um, you know, certainly talk to uh, the dentist that I bought out. Okay. He had, uh, say, two and a half hygienists and, and, um, so talk to him a little bit, and that was helpful. But otherwise, I had uh, started using uh, Blatchford Solutions. Oh, okay. Bill Blatchford is uh, is a was a practicing dentist, and and uh, started this uh, practice management company, and and I've been using them. He helped in the transition. He's the one that really got me to look at buying this practice before I was ready, because I still had the lease at the other office, and okay. I thought, you know, I. I need to uh, finish out the lease before I can buy the practice. He said, no, you need to do it right now. Yeah, good for and, him. And uh, convinced me that I'd be able to, you know, do well enough to still make that payment um, for the lease of the office I wasn't even using. Yeah. And uh, so that was a, a leap of faith there, too. But he was <laughs> right. And uh, but, yes, that's they've been helpful in that regard and trying to structure the practice and, and knowing how to work and. Um, they're the ones that kind of taught me to, you know, look at exams. If, if they've had one recently, then I could punt. And like I said, don't do that every time by any means, but it can, it can sure be helpful. Absolutely. No, definitely. And those guys are good. They're real good for sure. 
Tell me a little bit about um, some of the procedures you like to do and what you don't like to do in your practice. Uh, <laughs> anything you like to outsource more than others, or do you try to MacGyver it and kind of do everything you can in there? Tell me a little bit about that, if you could. In that regard, it's kind of nice to be a general dentist, you pick and choose what we like to do. Um, you know, things that I like are doing crowns or, um, you know, having a tooth that's broken down and being able to build it back up and save it. Somebody comes in that's had a a crack, a fracture of their tooth and still being able to help them and save it. I refer out most of the molar endo these days, just not nearly as efficient at it. So it's, it's a longer procedure for the patient, not much fun for either one of us. So I say the heck with that and let the specialist do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You sleep uh, better at night with that. I mean, it's just. Yeah. And then extractions. Um, I do some of the extractions, but if it's third molars, doing all of them. I did that in the Army. And, and um, nope, I punt those and let them do it. They're, they're better and faster than I am. And sometimes that's good knowing your limitations and, Absolutely. and or what you enjoy doing and or not so that you can punt on the ones that you don't like to do and. Focus on those that you do enjoy. Oh, absolutely. No, that's why you you got a kick in your step, I think. And it's just something. Some guys don't do that, man. And just do what you do good and, and let the other guys do the other stuff. And don't let patients kind of push you into, well, I need it done now or this and that. It's just you kind of say, I had one guy tell me, well, I, can't, I wouldn't even do it on my wife. <laughs> you know, like, right, well, if you're right. not going to do it yeah, on your wife, one. you're not going to do it on you. I mean, it's just... It's just something. Um, how's it work in Wichita now? In Wichita, is there a lot of specialists that are close to you that you can? Do you work with a certain, you know, oral surgeons? Or tell me a little bit about that. How that works on who you refer out and, and why and, and how you do that. Well, I think in Wichita we've got a really good dental community. Um, okay. You know, all the general dentists get along pretty well. This it's not a cutthroat type of environment. Um, the specialists we work well with them. Um, you know, everybody's always willing to help each other out. And um, so, you know, referring to the specialists, we'll call them up and, you know, d- d- describe a certain situation. They're happy to return a call. And Beautiful. Um, it's, it's nice to be able to just discuss a case with them. Um, so in that regard, we work with most of the specialists in town. And, um, you know, certainly that helps to get our patients in a little bit quicker if you're working with several that you feel comfortable with versus just one person in particular, as far as a you know, root canal specialist or somebody. So um, I think I have a good relationship with, with the specialists and that's, that's worked well. That's awesome. They take you out to lunch or anything or got any certain ones like my brother, he's always taking out some of the GPs, you know, and some of them I, I know real good because Kevin's not taking me out as much as he used to, but, uh, uh, no, it's just, it, it's some places it's cutthroat, like here in LA and Orange County, it's, there's so many dentists in every corner and no one really knows each other. And it's just, it's so big and so freaking. it's just, it's just tough, you know? And I just hear doctors that, oh, I don't want to send to him because he doesn't refer and this and that. And it's just, uh, it can be nitpicky a little bit, but it's, it sounds like you got some nice harmony in your town. How big is Wichita, by the way? Wichita is about, um, 350,000 oh, man, in town a- and then probably half a million when you include the surrounding communities. That's big. Oh, that's huge. And again, we have one little city called Santa Ana here has 400,000, but uh, that's still, I mean, that's, that's a lot of people. So you can draw from quite a big pool. A lot of dentists in town. How many dentists do you think you got surrounding that whole area? Man, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I haven't counted lately. <laughs> well, um you know, in that regard, there there are quite a few, but still, it's a it's a friendly community. There are not more than enough patients to go around, so we're not fighting over each other to try to get a patient. So. Good, good, good. Um, and you know, you mentioned going to lunch. There's a group when I first came back. There's a group of uh, I'm on the west side of Wichita. Okay. And a group of west side guys get together. There's probably about ten when I first got back, and over the years, that's kind of dwindled. And now there's just. Um, myself and, and an orthodontist and, and occasionally an endodontist that get together okay. uh, maybe once a month or so used to be every week but we've gotten busier and 
so it's uh, tapered off a little bit, but still like to get together as, as often as we can. It's no fun. kidding. That's awesome. No, that's neat. So tell me a little bit about your marketing strategy. Um, do you do any of the social media? You work in the public sector. Tell me a little bit about what you do to drive patients to your practice. Well, um, one of the gals in the office does um, does some of the social media aspect. We have a okay. um, Facebook page, and she'll post things on there. Okay. Um, but, you know, to be honest, we haven't done a whole lot with that. Um, when I bought this practice then, it, like I said, it more than doubled the size of my practice when I joined the two together. So um, we were definitely plenty busy. And then our biggest draw is just uh, – you know, word of mouth, that's the internal awesome. referrals. And, uh, that's been, that's been really great. Our, our, I guess our second biggest is, um, the Delta dental website, okay. you know, patients just looking to see who's close and, um, they find me that way. And so I've, I guess I'll say I've been blessed that I don't have to, you know, hit, hit the marketing aspect really hard to try to try to drive clients in. So, um, that's awesome. Really just kind of a Facebook occasionally, you know, and I hear that by so many practices that are successful that you basically, you know, it's word of mouth where you're getting most of uh, 90% plus, uh, where you're getting your business from is word of mouth. And it's just your existing patients that are happy that you're taking care of. And it's just, it's free. Uh, it's just something that there's a lot of guys that will push, push, push and market. And it's just something that, um, there's nothing better than word of mouth, and it's just the old school. It's been around since a caveman, you know. It's just word of mouth. You know, Doctor Dugan does great dentistry. Their staff is nice and cordial, and we love going there. He's a good family man, and it just works. It's just you know, kind of the golden rule: treat people good, and that's your best marketing advice I can think you can get from anybody. Because I've done this a long time, and I've seen a lot of doctors that. You know, big volume guys, small volume guys, but at the end of the day, um, the ones that are always busy, they're not pushing the envelope. You know, they might do a lot of onesie twosies, not a lot of big rehabs, but they are solid. And when you have downturns in the economy, they survive. They're not over their heads thinking and doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing, but um, good level headed you know, people that are trying to do a good thing with the public sector and doing a good job and you'll grow. It'll take time. I'm like, even too, with this practice, new practice you got going, I bet you when we do this again, say five years, 10 years, it's just going to be such an amazing thing that, you know, um, in time, you know, you will grow. Don't think about the money. Don't worry about that. That'll all come. But, uh, for you to bite off and go ahead and purchase like you did and doing this in this day and age. And heck, I think you have like, uh, you have like six children too. That's pretty awesome. You got to- <laughs> <laughs> I do have, yeah. <laughs> That's so cool, man. I, I come from six kids in my family. We had four boys and two girls, man. There's nothing like a big family. And uh, how many boys and girls you got working in that family of yours, Dr. Dugan? Yeah, I've got a, I've got an even mix. Three and so, three. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of crazy. I never thought I'd, grow up and have six kids everybody i knew you know you got married you had two kids and that was it so yeah. that was what i thought was normal <laughs> and now here i am with six so oh. um yeah they're they're awesome that's so uh, cool. definitely keep us busy involved in all kinds of activities so we're oh. running around but i bet uh, how old yeah, it's, how it's do they run from what age to what age so they're 15 13 11 9 7 and 2 oh dang <laughs> that's, yep. that's awesome still, still got one in diapers ah uh, but that two-year-old is that a boy or girl the two-year-old yes he's a boy uh, yeah he's gonna be the toughest one and the, the the he's he's probably a little handful right now but maybe not so much i was the youngest boy of four but uh i don't know man that's that's so cool <laughs> yeah what a range yeah, too <laughs> it is yeah yeah, they were every two years and then uh, had a little bit of a lull and <laughs> had another one. So. Oh, man. <laughs> That's time to get a couple minivans and a vasectomy, I'm thinking, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just well, kidding. No. Yeah, there are some options there. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome, dude. I remember, yeah, we drove those minivans with the dual sliding doors. And we only had two kids, but, uh, yeah, like, like you said, you know, everyone has two, and it's like, I think it's great, man. It's tough for you now, probably a little bit, but 
get another five, 10 years when the kids are in their twenties and getting older. Our boy yesterday, we celebrated his 34th and our other boy's 31 and and I'm 55. It's like, dude, we did it kind of young, but it's, it's neat as they get older and they start having kids and you're your grandparent and stuff. But, uh, I just think, you know, you're going to have so much joy, you know, with those kids, have a big family like that. Imagine that in 30 years, you're going to have like 25 grandkids probably. And you're going to have like oh, three man. dental practices. It's saying kids, you're going to have 14 dentists in the, in just the, the siblings, you know, with their kid. No, you, n- <laughs> you never know, man. It's going to be Dugan. De- possible. <laughs> Dugan yeah, dental practices. No, Dunal, uh, Dugan Dental Centers across Kansas and Missouri. <laughs> Holy cow. That's yeah, doing yeah, it, man. Something. <laughs> We're going to be the next smile, you know, or the big, you know, uh, bright smile or whatever. Some of those bigger places. You never know. If you got something that works good, you can multiply it. And, um, yeah, it, I'm just sitting there yeah. rambling there a Anything's little bit. But... possible, but yeah, I haven't had that vision just yet. So. <laughs> it'll come. It'll come when you start to see yeah. those colleges. It, you know, like the Keating boys, I told them, you're going because we didn't have any money back in the day. It's like, going to college? Yeah. You, the only way you go going to college, you're going to get a scholarship, my boys. <laughs> right, out nice. of high, right out of high school, they both came and worked for me because they didn't get that scholarship. Uh, well, I've I've got one daughter who thinks right now that she'd like to be a dentist. So I was doing the math, I was thinking, well, I need to hang on for fifteen years <laughs> until you can join. And uh, well, you know, gonna, we'll see. I'll cut. We'll down, see what happens. I'll cut down your price a little bit on those Brooks or aesthetics, and yet you do so much with me, and uh, that'll help out for the college <laughs> fund a little bit for you. Because <laughs> now that I hear uh, about all these kids, we got to help out the dude and practice a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, awesome. That's so cool. So tell me though, with. Uh, uh, the insurance. Um, so do you do fee for service or is it insurance driven practice? Tell me a little bit about that if you could. We do have certainly some fee for service patients, but um, now I'm contracted with Delta and, and Blue Cross. And, um, you know, those are the, those are the only two that I've signed up for. Yeah. When I was an associate, they, he started to be good for me to sign up for the Delta PPO plan. And, uh, to try to drive some of my own patients to me instead of just seeing his. And yeah. um, so I've, I do still have that. And, um, but yeah, I don't know. I'd say it's maybe 70 or 80% is uh, insurance. Okay. In the practice. So How is um, it's certainly nice when you, when you get somebody that is a, a fee for service patient. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I got, I can't believe how many practices I got. They're all out in like New York and, florida areas i think it's older communities or something but they're all just fee for service and i was just like how does that work and it's like yeah ah, it's just it's tough because i just know here in california like delta dental man i mean my dentist there's dentists around here that delta it's just they're not they don't pay so much on it and i i I don't know if it's different i think it's different per state i'm not sure if it's a national thing or what but uh they dropped it down like 20 or 30% a few years back or something. And it's just, it's so sad when you see a dent like me, I pay medical for all our employees here. And it's just something um, we go through Anthem Blue Cross too, I think. And it's just something that, you know, you go to a doctor, you need a hysterectomy or you need freaking, you know, a mastectomy or whatever the insurance pays for it, you know, pretty much all of it. And it's like the dentist, like you get insurance and it's like, yeah, you get, 1500 bucks a year in cleanings and this and that, and maybe something off on a crown prep, but it's just, it just doesn't seem fair the way the insurances work for dental and they work for medical. It's just like, it's so tough, but, uh, I, don't no, know I it, definitely agree. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, definitely a daily, um, struggle, yeah. you know, dealing with, with insurance. And so, but it's the game you got to play if, if you're going to accept it. So. Well, and what you're doing is like, I'm not the most cheapest lab out there. And I know there's other options for you. And I appreciate you using me. And especially when you're doing a lot of insurance based patients. And, you know, um, I just I thank you for that because I know, you know, other guys won't use me because, oh, Sean, I can get it for 20 bucks cheaper. And that means a lot to me, this and that. I understand it. But at the end of the day. I can alleviate a lot of lost chair time and uh, a lot of less anxiety when it comes to your lab, which I do to a lot of dental practice for a lot of years. I think it's important, mm-hmm. you know, but um, thank you, man. Hats off to you for uh, 
for doing what you do for your patients because you're get, they're getting some of the best dental work out there available, you know. And uh. yeah, well, I, the work has been has been really good. You know, uh, the restoration's coming back. They've just been great, and uh, so thank you for for all of that because that you're right. That does save chair time. Um, you could go with somebody cheaper, but if you end up spending more time or remakes or what have you, then you know then. Uh, you've lost in the end anyway. So absolutely, uh, the restorations have really been great. Oh no, that's so awesome, it, dude! It thank, well. you, thank you for that, man. So, what do you do for like continuing education? Do you do stuff online, or do you do you do, go to my, many dental conventions? Tell me a little bit about that, if you could. Um, well, do do the occasional um, convention with some of the um, some of the specialists in town have been sponsoring um, some local. Okay. Uh, continuing education, they'll bring in somebody, a national type of speaker. And so fortunately then I don't have to go very far. Um, you know, some I'll do online occasionally as needed. Um, but you know, with, with the kids, it's yeah, a little bit harder true. to get away. And if I can, if I can stay local, then I like to do that. Absolutely. Do you do anything for, have you done anything on implants? Are you thinking about sinking implants? Are you just going to restore them or, um, what do you think and you want to do in the future or what do you think you want to work on anything in particular, um, technique wise? You know, with implants, I've, I've thought about it in the past. Um, right now, uh, just kind of in a good spot with doing what I'm doing, restoring them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, I like to not say never to anything, but yeah. right now I'm, I'm, it's not on my radar really to to get into placing them um you know the the draw or the appeal i guess would be you know being able to keep it in house and and uh, take care of the patient from start to finish um and maybe be able to save them a little bit of money versus you know going to the specialist and and me but it's just kind of working well so no um, i don't haven't, mess it haven't up decided to rock the boat yeah i i know if i was in this i'd be the same way i would just do what i like to do and I, some guys just get into those surgeries and sinking implants. But, dude, if you've seen all the implants I've seen in all my career, I would be the first one to say, don't do them unless you're really good and you got the skills and you got the time to really get it down and learn it right because things can go awry, you know. And it's not the end of the day if you have to put these things asleep. You just got to cover them up and try to find some new bone area. But there's a lot to that screwing that stuff in a person's jaw. And it's just, uh, I don't know, it's just... I see a lot of guys, man, they'll go take a weekend course and they're coming back on Monday, man, pulling back flap and sinking this stuff in with a ratchet. It's like, whew, I don't know. I just, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it, I'm a little sissy boy when it comes to that kind of stuff. I just, uh, I would do what I do best and then get the training if you want to do something. But again, at the end of the day, you could just, you look at, if it's it's a money thing, I see that in one way or, you know, but I don't think you're going to help be saving a whole lot you're going to be stressing yourself a little bit and at night you're going to be thinking a little bit more about mrs jones man if that thing is going out to left field i i got that off angle a little bit i should have used a surgical stand or something instead of just freehanding it and then you know especially too when you start doing sinus lifts and all that i got guys doing that and that's just they got big wavelengths, oh, sure. man, or something. It's just, oh, but that stuff, I would do what I do best unless I'm going to specialize in something. Yeah, if I'm going to do endo or I'm going to be an oral surgeon and, and do this stuff, then I don't know. I just think uh, there's a happy medium of practicing good gentle dentistry with a nice staff that you got that's been with you for a while. It can be really predictable and, you know, you can sleep well, have a good life, work three or four days and make a good living. And just don't push those limits thinking, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. Do what you feel best. And then, and if you want to get out there and educate yourself more, take your time with it and then take baby steps if you're going to get into something new. <laughs> because, well, sure. Yeah. And with implants, you know, there are a lot of ways for things to go sideways. So <sighs> you're right. Some guys will do a weekend course and, and that might be great for them. I'm not yeah. one of those guys. I, I would need definitely more hands on and yeah. uh, more extensive training on it. And, um, 
they're again just not wanting to take the time away from the family and have um, have that added expense right now. So oh, absolutely. Uh, no. Nah. Maybe someday we'll see. Yeah. Oh heck yeah! You're still young, man. You're just a puppy. You still got many years to go on <laughs> <in> this. <laughs> uh, so yeah. what what's like uh, one of the late? You say so you got your practice now, newer practice. Uh, what's some of the latest equipment that uh, you've purchased? The latest piece of equipment that you've purchased? Well, I'd say um, I did. Uh, purchased a Cerac several years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, it was probably, well, five and a half years ago now, I'd say. So it's just paid off. So that's kind of nice. Is that collecting uh, dust in, after, the back, in, in the back room? Is that collecting some dust or are you still using it now and then? Probably more dust than anything. <laughs> yes. I got, when, uh, I got before I made the move, <laughs> uh, when I was still at the other practice, I, I was doing mostly Ceracs. And uh, it was working just fine. It was more time consuming. Yeah. Uh, when I made the move over to this practice, it, uh, the, the flow of everything in, in the office, it's just worked really well for me to be able to jump in and, and uh, prep a tooth and then turn it over to the assistant. Absolutely. Um, and in truth, as I've said, uh, you've made it very nice and easy for me when the crowns come back that the assistant makes sure that it fits and, and, um, usually very little adjustment, if any. So uh, I come in and spin it on and I'm, you know, off and running again. So that's so cool. that flow has been, been really good in that regard. We're able to do more crowns in a day than I, than I was able to with, with the Cerex. Some guys are probably better with the uh, time management and, and uh, using the Cerex uh, more efficiently yeah. than what I was. But um, yeah, the, I've, I've been doing more of the conventional lab crowns uh, since I made the move over and well, we it's love just that. working well. So there again, I don't want to go back. <laughs> no, so. I know. Hey, it's a great thing this Eric. It really is in certain areas. Like, but what, do, what can you see like three or four patients maybe at a couple hours a piece or an hour and a half, two hours, depending on how fast you can get. I mean, I guess you can bounce from room to room and get maybe some more in, but I don't know by everything time, everything's said and done by the time you prep it and, and have that mill working out there with that one single bird trying to do that. And then you're glazing it and putting secondary anatomy. It's a couple hours in, isn't it? You know I mean? And well, yeah, some know. guys are really able to be efficient with it and, um, get the time down. I, we were always scheduling about two hours. Sometimes we get done a little over an hour and a half, but that, that was more rare. Yeah. Just for me, it, it, it was always about a two hour. Uh, excuse me, kind of deal. And, yeah. and, uh, now we schedule a crown for an hour and I'm in there, um, you know, 10 minutes or something and, Heck yeah. um, <laughs> you know, numb first and then go in and prep and then I'm out. So that's, uh, yeah, like I said, have, we weren't able to be efficient enough to get that many crowns in a day. And so, uh, using the Cerac is, it's cool technology. I do like it and yep. we'll do the occasional, uh, sedation, have nurse anesthetists come in and sedate somebody. And then that can be a neat uh, use of it there to be able to get it done while they're sedated and, and um, while you do other work as well. And they wake up and it's all done. No kidding. Well, hey, it's there and certain situation might need an onlay, an inlay or something like that. And you got, you know, got the time, take the dust off it and get out there and do yourself a Sarek, but uh, I love it when you do those indirects with me, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine so. <laughs> what are your thoughts on other t new technology out there, like the impression scanners? You think you might ever do something like that with, uh, you know, I, I got Sarek guys that actually send me scans too, but um, more so than not, it's right. like a lot of the three shapes and true deaths and, you know, um, some of the other ones out there, the Iteros and stuff, but uh, they're pretty amazing uh, and they're pretty fast. Scan it real quick, have your girls temp them and get them on out. Uh, but uh, it's just, uh, I, I, you know, I love it. We're getting quite a bit of, uh, you know, scans that are just freaking unbelievable where I can do a model even and they're dropping right in and it just saves so much time. Like you can scan it right there. I'm getting it here instantly you know and then it's like uh -huh. i'm done by nighttime almost i could send it to you the next day or we're usually doing about two days two three days total but oh uh, wow that's cool yeah it's just um i like it get people all those temps faster and you know you have a downtime in your i get a lot of doctors that sean your cases get back to me so fast that 
we have our staff always looking when they get back because we can call patients in quicker and just have them come in and you know your crowns drop in five minutes or less sean so we're always seeing like oh we got cases back already let's call miss smith let's call miss jones or you know and get them back in quicker because I, I think a lot of dentists get paid when it's final crown seat not when you prep it or or who knows uh, you know some get it paid some sure to pay yeah. down the line with insurance but uh I just think, you know, guys and people in temporaries, man, teeth like to move more than we think. And and a lot of times these patients, um, you know, some of the staff, some of the assistants and stuff that are doing the temps, sometimes, you know, they like to take those crowns out, the temps out just a little bit too much out of occlusion. And, you know, super eruption happens, you know, sometimes by the time the patient's out of the chair, might be a day or two, but, you know, what's in the mouth and what's on my models are different. So, Broad interproximal contacts and nice, you know, couple point, three point cuffs, you know, occlusion if you can keep it in there. That's so important because, you know, to get that chair time down, it's it's a two way street, man. The staff's got to be doing it on your end and we got to do it on our end and we get a pretty good success rate when we're doing it together. But um, obviously you guys got it down because, you know, your crowns are dropping in. But sometimes, you know, don't. Don't take those temps out of occlusion, man. Don't make them all happy. I want to almost feel like a little lightning rod when they're biting on it so they don't bite on it over there and then get them back in a week, you know. Don't get them back in three weeks. And that's why we do everything in five days or less here because we want to get it back to you so you can get – it just – the success rate moves up so much more the quicker we can get it back in the mouth and, you know, just – Oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's been working really well. So that's that's been great. uh, What do you do when you're not working? What do you like to do to – Obviously, I know you got a lot of things with your family, but what do you personally like to do uh, to to make yourself feel good? You know, occasionally get out and golf. Oh, okay. um, like to do that when I can. Uh, it's more time consuming, though. So, again, time away from the kids makes it uh, harder. But I've yep. uh, been playing racquetball in the morning. Oh, dang. That's uh, tough. Body, so. I yeah, to- that's, that's been a lot of fun. Pick that back up after, I don't know, 10 years away from it. So. Oh, I've uh, been see, playing dude. most mornings during the week, and uh, that's been that's been a lot of fun. Take out some aggression on that little ball. And, oh, that's such a trip! I did uh, that way back in high school, man. And that you have to run your ass everywhere. You got those little gloves you got to put on, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The little padded gloves with the fingers, like uh, no fingers on them. They're like half finger gloves, but uh, that's bad, man. Using all the all three walls, getting it down low, get it low. <laughs> yeah it's, it's a good sport it's uh it's a lot of fun pretty pretty quick moving oh no i was thinking a hand uh racquetball you just got your racket right but you're yeah uh, yeah we play indoors you can play outdoor in this three wall but yeah i was thinking of handball there where you had the gov right. pads where you smack it but racquetball yeah so you're doing racquetball or handball yeah racquetball, racquetball. Yeah, i haven't tried handball i I think I'd prefer having the racket in my hand. Yeah, I tried that handball back in the day. That's harder than heck. But racquetball, that's where you try to nail it down like a couple inches off the the bottom so the guy can't get to it, right? Just smack it. That's right, yep. yep. <laughs> Have it hit twice before you can hit it. Oh, uh, there's a greatest show, my my favorite show, and I kind of starting to look like that guy, Doug Heffernan. It's uh, called King of Queens. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Remember that show, King of Queens? <laughs> well, he yes. Had, there's a TV, there's a show where he's playing racquetball with, I think, his buddy uh, Deacon. <laughs> and uh, he's kind of overweight, and he just is going to town and doing all the stuff, and all of a sudden, it's raw. after like about 20 minutes, he's just yakking on the court because it takes so much energy out of you. But uh, I love that show. It's a, that's a great yeah. one on the racquetball there. <laughs> the one I remember is uh, John Candy and Splash. Oh, yeah. Racquetball. Yeah. <laughs> I think I remember that, too. God rest yep. his soul. He left us too early, too. Dang. What piece of advice would you like to give um, – to some of these newer dentists starting off, you know, kind of do's and don'ts and maybe what you should be doing and maybe not what you shouldn't be doing. Tell me a little bit what you think about uh, some advice for some newer dentists starting off. Um, you know, I think just being honest with people, um, you know, tell them, tell them what you see and what your recommendations are and um, treat people like you would your own family members. Don't get caught into doing something just because it's works is good for you, you know, if, if it's a profitable procedure or something, um, you know, 
just just be honest with people and and uh it'll pay dividends absolutely where's the wisdom there baby that's awesome dr duke and i think we're gonna end it on that i can't thank okay. you enough for your time man it's it's uh it went by quick but uh thank you for taking did, the time <laughs> take care of those children and hey anything you need here from us you know just we're here for you and i can't thank you enough for everything and uh you know, if you're ever out this way, we'd love to have you by the lab, and heck, we'll give you a little paper and write that thing off on that great lecture you gave us for your uh, <laughs> for your tax accountant, and then uh, we could send you over to Disneyland with all those darn kids. And, um, heck yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh, man, we'll hook you up, and we'll take you out. I know you like to fish a little bit, too. We'll take you out on the boat, man, and uh, we get on the fish. We just got a big old 208-pound bluefin tuna last week, and... Uh, Holy and, cow. and the Dorado are going wild here off the coast here. Um, water is up to like 73. So the Dorado is like uh, the Mahi Mahi. And they're like the golden yellow. They're fun to catch and they, they jump out of the water. But we, we got a, uh, yeah, took one of our dentists out. She's from Pennsylvania with her son and uh, they got on 15 Dorados in one little three hour session. And uh, there's a lot of, Boy, that's awesome. A lot of fish, man. But uh, anytime. We've got a little pond out back of the house right now, and and we go out there most days and go fishing and oh, uh, you know some perch, crappie, and largemouth bass. But oh. Nothing as large as what you're talking about. That's no, amazing. but that hey, for about eight months out of the year, all we do is we have these. They're called calico bass, and they're just you know two to three pounds. But sometimes you'll get those five to seven pounders, and and then uh, we get the sand bass. So we get sand bass and calico bass, and they're smaller. But we just use light tackle, and I love it, man. I got these small little poles with light tackle and just fight, it just fights you know it looks like you're fighting a hundred pounder with your pole and oh i love it you just do it out oh, that's the cool yeah that's you, cool i'd love to do that oh that's man great. get out there and you'd love it yeah we got a we got a gyro on the boat too it's in the in, in the belly of the beast and it kind of holds the boat stable out there and uh kind of a neat thing it's called a sea keeper so i'm not a real big uh i get a little wishy-washy out in that water so i got this uh I got this sea uh, keeper gyro, and it helps me a lot to be able to stay out there on anchor, you know, for three or four hours, not even feeling it. It's just like kind of a cool thing. Yeah, that's about. awesome. But uh, definitely with that family, you're welcome here, man. We'll hook you up for sure. And, you know, all the years. We appreciate and, it. Well, hey, Dr. Dugan, thanks again, dude. And, uh, man, God bless you and your family. And, uh, again, anything we can do here, just let us know. And, again, thank you for coming on our podcast today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right, Enjoyed Dr. It. Dugan. We'll see you later, buddy. Yeah. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us on the Dental Love Podcast Show this week. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or search the Dental Love Podcast on iTunes for our weekly feed. Don't forget to visit KeatingDentalArts.com slash promo for exclusive offers. Keating Dental Arts is a full-service dental laboratory, and we're nationwide. We'd love for you to send us a case so we can show you the Keating difference. If you dig what you heard, please leave a review on iTunes, and we'll be back next week.